So yeah, welcome. The reason I think for pulling this event together and inviting you along is, as Dan said, is we're starting to see more of our clients wanting to know and learn more about what the future of work is and also just better understand what are some of the key trends and themes because it can get pretty overwhelming. Um, there's lots of disparate information, some of it's not so true, some of it's bang on and I think it's kind of coming at us at such a rate that it's pretty tough to know what is relevant to you and what's sort of hitting now. So let's dive in and first sort of dispel a myth here that um, we aren't going to be taken over by the robots necessarily. Um, this one even looks a little bit surprised that we're even thinking that, but definitely much more of work is going to be automated. And that is actually going to give us more time, space and freedom to do more of the work that we love. So yes, people are concerned that smart machines are going to outsmart us. Yes, they're concerned that artificial intelligence is going to get so close to human that we won't know fake from real, and some of those are very valid concerns. But I think the real question to be focusing on is how do we, and this is what the futurists are talking about, how do we collaborate better with the robots and humans, and so that we are working together in a way that empowers us, that we're using artificial intelligence in a way that makes our work more effective and easier and better, so that we can be uniquely human. And we're definitely starting to see more of this happening. I love it technology. So according to the OC, OECD, the estimate is that 14% of existing jobs are just going to disappear in the next five to ten years, which I think is the fact that has been scaring a lot of people. Um, are we going to be replaced by the robots? Which of this work is going? But the good news is that a lot of that work is menial or labour intensive or repetitive. And that is going to then, as I said, allow us to do more of the important work of being human. The other thing that we're seeing is that um, work is changing, the workforce is changing and the workplace is changing. So yes, we have full-time employees doing a lot of this work, but we also have freelancers, we have gig workers, we have crowds, I don't know if here anybody has heard of Mechanical Turk, which is an online job platform where you can do just task-based roles. So people can log in, do a really short task, might take them five minutes, they might get a couple of cents to a dollar, but people are actually earning full-time livings from this. And these are just micro-sourced tasks. Uh, it's a way of being able to outsource your work in different ways all over the world. So there's just different people working on different things that we have access to globally across time zones. And then in terms of workplace, we're already starting to see it. So we often have um, the headquarters of a main company in a major town, but now we're starting to see hubs where those organisations are allowing you in a region or a smaller town to be able to go to a small hub where you can work with your team members and not have to commute and take all that extra time. In addition to that, there's just a plethora of co-working spaces popping up all over the place. We have remote working, we have flexi working, and all of this is giving us more purpose and autonomy and flexibility. So hours are changing, the way in which we work is changing, and the environment in which we work is changing. A little bit of background. Um, so why am I up here talking about this? Because I realise that for the last 10 years I've been running an online business, teaching and coaching and educating entrepreneurs of how to take their skills, knowledge and experience and turn it into products and services. And I pretty much worked from, um, with my laptop, I literally worked from trains, planes, automobiles, cafes, all over the place. And my entire business is in the cloud so I could take your phone or your laptop and pretty much log on to be able to run my business from anywhere, anytime. I've also worked with a virtual team for the last 10 years. Most of them I've never met. They live in five different countries. They themselves are freelancers, contractors, business owners. And um, I didn't realise at the time for the last 10 years, working from co-working spaces and running that business 24-7 or without me, that I'm essentially in the future of work before it was labelled that. So I have a pretty... Um, I just, I'm a huge advocate for the way in which we're able to work. I've also written just a couple of books on it, um, just so you prove that I know what I'm talking about. Lived out of my suitcase for six and a half years doing this, and also am a huge fan of systems, technology, automation and outsourcing to be able to run a business that doesn't take over your life. So I've been living and breathing this and I'm really fascinated with the trends, and so wanted to bring to your attention the three that at Inspire Group we feel are probably the most important. And I'm trying to consolidate a whole heap of information and context here into sort of three overlying principles that we think are going to be the most important. So technology, as I mentioned before, thanks to automation, thanks to smart machines, 
thanks to robots and AI, a lot of the repetitive jobs, the labour intensive jobs are being done by robots. There are robots picking kiwi fruit in Hawke's Bay. There are robots helping out with surgeries in hospitals in Waikato. And soon, I hope we're gonna have driverless cars so that when I get back from the airport, I can just have my car fit me up, take me home, fantastic. But all of these things are allowing us to be able to do more with our own time, space, energy, and learning. Uh, also, again, the OECD has suggested that 32% of the existing jobs are going to radically change in how they are being sort of applied out there, and that's thanks to technology, which you've always had right at the tip of your fingertips in your smartphone, which is one of the most powerful small computers anybody could ever have. It gives us access to almost everything. The other one is that that automation allows us to have more energy for actually looking at what we are uniquely designed to do, which is be human. This is skills like creativity, empathy, intuition, imagination, and these are roles where coaching, therapy, leadership, facilitation, consulting are all going to become even more important skills. Because empathy, for example, is not something that you can train an AI to understand. It's a complex human emotion. And then along with that, and that beautiful pineapple, is merging of humans and tech. Um, so how are we augmenting together, which may sound a little bit out there for some people, but it is happening. There are exoskeletal suits now that are helping reduce RSI in the workplace, making us stronger and healthier and more productive. But outside of that, you've probably seen virtual reality. Um, goggles is even something that I'm pretty excited about as a triathlete. You can now buy a $200 pair of goggles that will tell you how far you're swimming, at what pace, how many meters, your cadence, and your heart rate, um, which is pretty incredible. So some of these augmentations between human and tech are actually going to make us more productive, effective, and one of the biggest skills is going to be how do we deal with technology? How do we learn it at a pace that feels good to us? Um, that we're not scared of it, and it actually makes our lives and learning much better. Okay, so this is a, a no-brainer. I know so many of you are already doing this, but digitized learning means that it is at your fingertips. So it's mobile-based, it's platform-based, you can use your smartphone, your tablets, you can use any sort of device that is able to give you that learning. Um, and it works in really well with your time and your energy and is available 24-7. So, so many of you are hopefully already doing that, if not personally. I'm also talking here about YouTube, podcasts, bite-sized micro-learning. Immersive learning. So I don't know if you know what that is there. It's actually the Oculus Go, and I believe it's at the moment the only virtual reality pair of goggles that doesn't need a PC, computer, or Wi-Fi connection to be able to work. Um, but we are starting to see some really cool things coming through with immersive learning, for example, virtual reality scenarios of training, for example, emergency response in hospitals, but also learning on the go, so how would you handle this bullying and harassment aspect, and um, it's incredibly effective for learning because it literally feels like you're there, but you could be in a remote office or working from home and understanding and experiencing that. Um, there's other forms of immersive learning such as people being able to create something with 3D printers <coughs> right in front of them. So they're doing their learning online and then they're modelling that and building it with a 3D printer right in front of them, which I imagine for things like architecture and engineering, etc., must be pretty incredible and very tangible. Gamification, I'm going to let Munch talk to this in much more detail, but um, we all sort of, if you are a gamer, even if you're not, we do love a little bit of competition personally for ourselves. We love to be motivated to see how we're progressing and it's been proven to really help learning when you can have rewards and levels. I know when I was studying up um, future of work design thinking, Coursera emailed me saying, Natalie, if you just put in half an hour today, you'll be 42% along in your course and that's better than 70% of the people doing this. And I was like, I'm in. <laughs> so just really smart things like that really, really help. And then artificial intelligence is just getting smarter and smarter. And this is actually a real life example. I got given beta access to this just last week from Typeform. Typeform is a really cool online survey tool. And they've just created this product called Communicate. And it is literally AI integrated into your learning. So in documentation, there's somebody there saying, hey, does this make sense? Do you need any more info? Here's a link. In blog posts and articles and videos, you can actually have real time AI where they've pre-programmed in what they think you're going to ask and you actually it's amazing when you see it and experience it because it feels like you're having a conversation with 
a piece of copy or information. Um, it, it, share, it keeps you on the page longer, it keeps you in your learning longer, and it really was effective for my learning to understand it more because it felt like it was two-way. And then finally, thank you to Corfiber for the beautiful word, which is there is literally a buffet of learning opportunities out there, and you get to kind of set the table with what piques your curiosity and interest, if I did that justice, where there's just different ways of being able to learn through open source platforms, through online communities, through mobile based learning, and flipped classrooms. And then this is actually an example of an Israeli startup called Jolt, where they've reversed the flipped classroom. So all the learning is done online, but you go into hubs where you can actually sit with your peers and do your own curriculum on-demand learning, but have the discussion with people who are there as well. So we are talking about classrooms before, that's quite an innovative way of flipping it and flipping it again. And I just really wanted to say thank you so much for listening. Um, put up my cute puppy picture so we might get some oohs and ahs. Um, you've got my email hopefully already, but please do reach out after this. We'll be sharing everything that we've sort of learnt this evening and continuing the conversation. Thank you.